Without a test, you don't have a testimony. And look at everybody in the Bible, and I'm going to leave you alone. Look at everybody who was tested, all the greats. Abraham, God told him to go, yeah. and he took his own yeah. son. Yeah. You got to trust God to that point. It wasn't until the end where God said, Abraham, Abraham. He looked behind him, and he was like, I, got, I have your sacrifice, not your son. I just wanted to see if you was going to trust me. I just wanted to see if you was going to trust me or give up on me or curse me. Or that's right. Job, that's my favorite book in the Bible. I named my daughter Keziah because his daughter was named Keziah. Job was tested how many times? Yeah, and he everything. never gave up on God. I lost everything twice, but I never gave up on God because I knew he had me. I just had to. It was necessary. It's necessary. So don't you give up your faith. If you fuck with me, go out there and be ambitious. Go out there and really get shit done and stop depending on motherfuckers. I am the star in any room that I stand in. I am the stand. Oh, now we gotta go. Hey, rich babes. How are you? Happy Sunday. I'm Bella Dior and I'm hosting your video. <laughs> Today, I want to talk about something my grandmother used to say that still resonates with me. She used to sing, he may not come when you want him, but he will be right on time. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. Okay, so listen, I'm not the singing type, okay, but I'm sure you guys definitely understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> Those words really hit different, don't they? Like, they remind me that no matter what that we go through, God sees and knows everything. Even when it feels like nothing's moving or changing, he's working behind the scenes on things that we know nothing about. And he's always making sure that we are protected and being put in places that we really need to be, even if we do not understand. The favor of God on your life will open doors that your natural strength cannot. Because God doesn't look at a degree or your qualifications. God looks at the posture of your heart. God looks at how willing you are, not just to serve him, but to steward what he wants to give you or what you already have. This is why it's important to not allow our faith to become perverted, which ultimately is fear. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Fear is a lack of hope and disbelief in the unseen. If we allow our faith to become perverted and now we're in this space where we are only operating in fear, we are now becoming irresponsible with the favor that is on our lives. And being irresponsible with the favor on your life will cause you to take things into your own hands, to try to manipulate things and control things, and you will not get the same results as you would if you allowed the favor on your life from God to work for you. And no, this doesn't mean that you just sit back and let God do everything for you because yes, faith without works is dead. However, make sure that you are not overcompensating once you've done all that you can because of your fear. I don't know who needed this, but this is your confirmation. I was reading Moses and I automatically heard God say the process of having faith and the process of trusting in me even when you can't see. You see, Moses wasn't able to really see what God has positioned him and placed him in within the thing that was out of reach because of the instructions he had gave him. So Moses was put out to look crazy because he was believing in something that he couldn't see. Because of the thing that he was in need of, it was kind of far. With that being said, with the blessing that you are in need of, the cries that you have cried, the prayers that you keep asking God and seeking guidance for, it's not too far. It's just that God has three answers. Yes, no, and not right now. You have to understand that just because it never hit the physical don't mean it's not going to come to pass. If it's in God's will, it's going to happen. But you have to understand that it's a process of everything. You see, when you're going to get through it the first time and you're going to testify on it, you're going to understand how to trust God because he did it the first time on his time. Everything come with a process and everything comes with instructions. Notice this, when Moses kept his eyes on God and listened to God, everything came to pass. So, rich babes, we may think that we know the perfect time for things to happen, whether it's that breakthrough, opportunity, or just finding love, but God has a way of showing us that his timing is always better. He sees the bigger picture, even when all we can see are the struggles and setbacks. And let me tell you, there have been so many times that I didn't understand why things were taking so long, but when I look back... <laughs> baby it was 
all making sense. I cannot be on this platform speaking to you ladies if I had not been through the things that I had been through, if I had not gone through the things that I have gone through and then went through the healing to then come back and try to bring reasoning on different topics. Like God has just been so good. If you stay with me until the end, I will tell you my own personal story, my own personal testimony. And yeah, so I just hope that you stay to the end. Thanks. But when I look back, I realized that God was just protecting me from things I just couldn't see at the time. There were situations I thought I wanted so bad. But if they had happened, I wouldn't be where I am today. Sometimes the things that we think are rejecting are actually redirecting. He's moving you away from what isn't for you so he can make room for the better. So if you're feeling stuck or like nothing is going your way, just know that God is working behind the scenes. Again, like I said, all things are working in your favor. He's working for you, not against you. The Bible says God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And I think the most beautiful part about that verse is he's a rewarder of those that seek him. It doesn't say he's a rewarder of those that do all the right things. It doesn't say he's a rewarder of those that read the Bible every day. It doesn't say he's a rewarder of those that don't curse or have sex or gossip or listen to secular music. We are so focused on judgment, telling each other what we're doing wrong, that we really not tapped in. God said, all you have to do is seek me. He's so gracious and merciful. He's just looking for someone who's trying. You don't have to get it right. He rewards you for seeking him. There's 170 women that are either mentioned by name or alluded to in scripture. But there is only one woman that Jesus ever tells us to remember. In the midst of a discourse about the end times, Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. The only thing we know about Lot's wife in Genesis 19, 26, but Lot's wife looked back and became a pillar of salt. The angel of the Lord said, don't look back at what's burning down. Don't look back at what I am finished with. Don't look back at the thing I am delivering you from. Don't look back at that thing. Look forward to the future, it says, but Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. She got calcified and stuck in a place that she was only meant to be passing through. And our world has shifted and a shaking has happened and things as we've known it are burning to the ground. And that word look back in, in the original language, it's look back with longing and a desire to go back. Her attachment to the past was greater than her commitment to the future. She wanted what she was leaving more than what God had for her in the future. We are so busy looking back and longing for the old that we're not moving into the new. My favorite thing about God is that when you show Him that you trust Him, He will show you why He can be trusted. When you put your last thing into Him, your, your last hope, your last seed, your last dollar, your last belief, He will show you that there is so much more where that came from. And it's really God's perfect opportunity to show you how wonderful He is when you're in a really tough situation and you don't know what else you're going to do and where else you're going to turn. That's when He can show you that He's truly God. Like, you think that the little bit that you have in your hand is not enough for nothing. But if you put the little bit that you have in the hands of God, he will show you that he is the God of all things and he owns it all and he can put it in your territory. He can enlarge your territory. You just have to put your trust in him. And the thing about trusting is that as long as you got your eyes on him, he will never allow you to fail. As long as you got your eyes on him, he will never allow you to sink. As long as you got your eyes on him, he will never forsake you. So my rich babes, in those moments of doubt, remember that faith isn't just about believing when things are good. It's about holding on even tighter when things get rough. It's okay to take setbacks and question the things and question the timing, but always come back to that faith. 
Keep pressing toward knowing that God's delays aren't his denials. I always say that. I say, you know what? I understand my situation. My situation is more of a delay. It's not a denial. I love that. Oh my goodness. I heard that a long time ago. They was like, look, he didn't deny you of it. He just delayed it. Okay. God is simply saying, not yet, my child, but soon. So keep moving and believing and praising God. God's timing is perfect and praise him even before it happens. They say praise him in advance. And when I say that is real, praise him in advance. Praise him all the time. God's timing is perfect even when it looks like waiting will be forever, but it's, it won't. I promise it won't. He has a purpose for your pain and a reason for your struggle and a reward for your faithfulness. So don't give up. He may not come when you want him, but trust that he will always be right on time. And as promised, my rich babes, I'll just give you guys a testimony, a short testimony. I don't want to waste any more of your time, but a short testimony that, uh, whew, and you can get the full story on my book, but uh, I'm an orphan, and uh, both of my uh, both of my parents passed away at the age of four. It's crazy because I already know that we did this topic, and I wasn't ready at the moment because I was waiting for me to talk about this topic so that way I can just share my testimony in a different type of setting. So um, I'm an orphan. My parents passed away when I was four. Uh, my my mom and my father they got married and when my mom found out she was pregnant at the age of 37 she got pregnant with me and she found out that she was already um hiv aids positive and at that time this was 1989 okay because i was born in the 90s 1990 and so my mom had already found out that she uh had and my she, my, my father got tested and found out he was also positive and um and honestly till this day i do not know it's been too many stories from my other family members as to how they got it but they got it um it was it was said I, they said it was my dad's fault but i don't know who to blame at the end of the day they're not here and by me my mother was pregnant with me when she found out her diagnosis and the doctor i'm pretty sure had gave her a choice of you know hey you can either keep this baby or you can maybe find a different alternate because the medicine that she has to take and her health declining it was just going to be a bad idea to keep me because you're putting your health and the baby's health at risk and given that this was all new back in the day back in the day you know it was all new at the time they didn't know how all this stuff was transpiring or whatever my mother had faith in God and decided to keep me she did not know what my what my life was going to be like. She did not know if I was going to be born with HIV AIDS or not. The doctors also said that if I do have it, that I wouldn't live past five years old. So, like I said, my mom had, you know, she did the, she did whatever she had to do, whatever the doctor had asked her to do, whatever medication she asked. Uh, they asked her to take. She did it. And as I grew, she got weaker. Father passed away and my mother was now taking care of a brand new baby. Well, one year old baby at that time. And she was also getting sicker and she was dying and I was growing. And it's just really sad because I cannot even believe this is my story. I, I just honestly, I can't even believe it's my story, but I mean, let me finish because I'm trying not to cry. By the time that uh, I was four, um, she had passed in April of 1994 and I became an orphan and they, the rest of my family still didn't know whether or not I was going to pass along with my parents. Um, I ended up living with my grandmother at the time uh, and... <sighs> Since my mom had me at 37, my grandparents were already pretty much up in age. Um, and so I was living with her for about a year. And then my other aunt, which is my mother's sister, took me on and I lived with her, her husband and my cousin um, up until. But uh, I'm still here, y'all. And 
not only am I still here, but I'm negative. I am negative. I don't know how two parents who had full-blown AIDS at the time of the diagnosis can birth a child and she come out healthy. So when I be having these topics and I be talking about certain stuff and I know we have a great time and I'm sorry, you know, I know we have a great time and everything like that. You know, we, we, you know, we be like, you know, these men ain't nothing. They all, they really, they really ain't nothing. Um... Like, it be real. It be real. And and I'm fortunate. I am fortunate. I am blessed and highly favored because God had favor over my life to where I am now 34, about to be 35 in January, and I'm healthy. Not only am I healthy, but I have five children that are healthy. And that's why when my ex-husband decided to cheat, okay, I was like, how dare you? My mother did everything she possibly could and sacrificed her life for me. And you're going to jeopardize my health because you want to be out here in these streets? I don't give a damn how many kids I got. Nigga, I'm leaving. Because what you're not about to do is fuck up what my mother did for me, which is do her best to keep me living. So, (laughs) y'all, listen, okay? Um, that's my story. That's my testimony. And I'm just so grateful to God. And I just had to share that with y'all. I had to tell y'all that my mom made sure I was here and she had faith in God because she didn't know if I was going to end up, you know, she didn't know, but she had faith in God and God kept me here. He kept me alive and he kept me healthy. Even though I went through those things in my marriage, I'm still healthy. I, my body is clean, completely clean. I have nothing running through my veins, but good health. So, okay, y'all, I'm sorry. I'm, I said it was going to be a short testimony, but I just want to thank God today. I just want to share my story with y'all today. We reached 14,000 subscribers. I'm really excited to have all of my rich babes. I love you all so much. If you want to read my entire uh, memoir, it is on Amazon. Uh, the link is down below, but Outside of that, y'all just have faith. Have faith in God and just keep moving. I love you all and please make sure that you like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you all next time. I love you. Stay rich, rich babes. But I promise you this. I'll always look at